when you dig up the town and you have a lot of construction, it's a mess. It's noisy. It's very invasive. Very invasive being rerouted and um, it, it was a mess. It was a mess. It looked horrible. It was a mess. It wasn't a this wasn't a pleasant place to be. The town of Skykomish presented a unique environmental problem for the state of Washington. That is a historic town based on the operation of railroads in the industrial age. There was a refueling station there. And over decades, that refueling station leaked petroleum, heavy bunker C, into the ground, into the groundwater, and over two million gallons of Bunker C fuel leaked from tanks and went underneath the town of Skykomish into the Skykomish River. When they first worked on the river levee and actually dug in with a backhoe, there were times, there were citizens literally on the bridge watching where oil would just, free product oil would come up and thought, wow, you know, first you saw the little, looked like a little rainbow swirl, then you saw a little tiny, you know, thread of black oil, then it was just huge. Just, the oil was incredible. What you saw, you go, oh yeah, <laughs> there's a problem here. So in Skykomish, we started that project with a community that didn't know very much about what was going on. They didn't know about the contamination. They didn't know about any health risks or what was going to happen. We spent a lot of time over a number of years with public meetings and community conversations, helping them understand what we were finding. And ultimately had kind of a milestone where we talked with them and said, okay, this is what we think the options are for cleanup. And the decision was made, and then we worked with the community and said, all right, so now we know what's going to happen. Let's talk about how we can make this pretty invasive cleanup work to your advantage. It was hard on the people that lived in this area, it really was. And um, then the following year my house got moved. We sat down in I don't know how many living rooms over and over again where we talked to people and said, okay, here's the plan for cleanup. Here's what we're going to do. By the way, we're going to move your house. There was a lot of negotiations for money to compensate me for pain and suffering, being uplifted, being uprooted. Um, all the time put involved that, and it's, we're not talking months or days, we're talking years. Let's find a place for you to live. What do you need in a house that you're going to live in for three months? Here's one that you can try. Okay, you're going to live there. Now we have to pack up all of your belongings. Let's talk about how to do that. Now we're picking up your house. You can come and watch us as we pick it up. And then we put your house back. Let's talk about what it looks like now. I can remember thinking, I would like a day to go by in my life where I don't have to talk with a railroad representative about what's going to happen to me. <laughs> Even though they were very pleasant people, very nice to work with. But it was, it was a, a huge part of my life. We didn't just want to um, go in and disrupt your lives and yeah, we got the soil cleaned up, but, and, but now we're gone. What we wanted to do is to get that town to look not at what exists today or yesterday, but to look at what their future could be tomorrow. We did a, a pretty comprehensive visioning process with that community. Ecology um, supported that work and, and we sat down and said, okay, what do you want your town to look like in 10 years? When, this, when everybody's gone and the cleanup's all done, what would you like Skikomish to look like? What do you want to be known for? It's a pretty small town, you know, there's 200 people that live there. Do you want to be an outdoor enthusiast kind of destination? Do you want to be a train town? Do you want to be another Leavenworth? And they really spent time thinking about what they wanted to be. seven years our, our town's been in a state of upheaval um, and uh, it's great to see things returning to normalcy. People are showing up today to help us celebrate the opening of the uh, Great Northern and Cascade Railway. It's a miniature railway that uh, people can ride on and people will uh, 
be able to come up free of charge and ride our, our trains and uh, get the feel, the old f flavor of uh, this railroad town. The town just was dying, just dying. It was like a go felt like a ghost town here last year. It felt very depressing, very hopeless. Um, but now the town's woke up, and I think it's going to be better than it ever was. Yeah.